This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to ourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. What is the future God has in store for us and for all the world? During this season of Advent, we are thinking together about the future, about that for which we hope. Taking our lead from the readings from Isaiah we're hearing, we're looking at the Bible and its images of promise. The promise of change and renewal God will bring to all the earth. Over these three weeks, we're considering how we are waiting for the day when swords are turned into plowshares, based on Isaiah 2. The wolf lives with the lamb, based on Isaiah 11. And streams of water break forth in the desert, based on Isaiah 35. Today, the second of these... The wolf lives with the lamb. Here's that reading we heard, a portion of it, from Isaiah chapter 11. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Can you picture, can you picture this hope, this way of imagining the future of God, the wolf with the lamb, the calf with the lion, the child playing in the presence of the poisonous snake? These are images, you see, of the creatures of the world who are naturally enemies, but, but here they are living together in harmony. No longer are they predator and prey. Now they are at peace. For this to really make sense, we have to think about the world a bit. In the Bible, the world is understood to be a place that is broken, that is out of balance. Sin, the fall of human beings, and the fall of the whole creation has resulted in a system of violence and fear 
that exists among every living thing. You've, you've probably seen one of those African safaris where they see animals on the hunt, where the lion is chasing down the poor, slow wildebeest. It's fascinating and gruesome stuff. We think of that as the, the circle of life, don't we? And it is. But it's the circle of life of the broken world we live in. But Isaiah, Isaiah is pointing to a time, the future that God has promised, when there will be no more hunting and no more chasing, no more hurting or destroying, and no more reason for anything to fear. Does that sound like a pie-in-the-sky kind of hope? Well, it's not supposed to. This is a real hope born out of what we know about God. God desires His creation to be at peace and to live together. And God has promised the day is coming, the day of the Lord will come, when this will happen. And so during Advent, when we say we are praying and waiting for the Lord, this too is our Advent hope. The wolf lives with the lamb. This year, I can't help but hear that image and think of the divisions, political divisions, issue-oriented differences, even violent factions that so dominate the American landscape. The Bible casts these images of real-world enemies, predators, and prey. But in our real world, enemies so often seem to be people who are different than us. What might it sound like? What might it look like to recast those words of Isaiah about the day of the Lord into our terms. Could it be the Democrats will live with the Republican? <laughs> the conservative will eat with the progressive. The immigrant child will play in the front yard of the native born friend. And those who love their country will extend a hand to those who hate it. Bullies and victims of bullies. Racists and victims of racism. Terrorists and victims of terror. They will not hurt or destroy, for the earth, the whole earth, will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. How does that sound? Does that sound too much? Too impossible for the Lord? Today we hear this living word from Isaiah about the wolf and the lamb. And what this word does is it invites us to use our holy imagination as we hold on to this holy hope. The holy hope is this. God has a plan, a promise, to set the world aright. So that all those who are at odds, all those who are at each other's throats, will live together as God intends. In peace and security. And therefore, what can your holy imagination do? What can you see that future of God being like 
Who will sit together? Who will eat together? Who will dwell together as God intends? That's the future we look for. The future we hope for. The future we pray for. So let's pray now. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth so that in your good time, every people and every nation may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.